Just the bits of training, the yeah. of training I've seen this week, I wouldn't have thought he's looking too encouraging. No, he should be okay. No, he's um, he's been he's been a bit sore from the game. Um, he got sore uh, against the Western Bulldogs in the first half, so uh, and played the second half, stayed on the field, did a really good job for us. So that's more of a precautionary one. Just let him recover really well. Really important player for us, you know, with the way he goes about his footy. So I'm I'm confident. You know, he's not over the line, but I'm confident that he'll be okay. Middle changes this week? Uh, yeah, Brad Simon's not going to play. He's uh, he's a bit sore on the knee. Hopefully that'll settle down pretty quickly. So he's the one I can tell you about. Ian Callanan will be named in the 25, which is uh, great recognition for him. So, um, you know, he's a fair chance to, to play his first game, which I think is fantastic for him if, if, it, if it falls that way. So he's obviously under consideration being in the 25. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a couple of other things, Graham, that we're looking at, and uh, till we'll, we'll finalise that this afternoon. So Aiden Riley being in the 25 again? Uh, Aiden, probably not. No, no. So he's, uh, but he's been, he's been okay. He'll, I'm, I'm pretty sure, Peter, he'll get his chance before the end of the year. The way he's going about his footy. He's been knocking on the door for. A yeah, he has. He's been uh, travelling emergency, and uh, um, his form in the SNFL couple of weeks ago was really impressive. It's probably just dropped off a little bit, but not, not enough to not necessarily select him, but um, he's getting close. So, uh, um, you know, our supporters will enjoy him when he plays. I think he, he plays with a similar intensity of a Rory Sloan, you know, around stoppages and that sort of thing. And you haven't made a final decision on Brent Riley just yet? Uh, not a final one, Tom, but he's, 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 uh, the, the knee soreness that he had last week is completely gone. So he's, he's fit, ready, available. Um, so he'll he'll come into strong consideration, um, and uh, once again we'll make that call this afternoon. I know they've got a few out the cats, but uh, mm. Skilly Stadium it doesn't get much tougher as an assignment, does it? No, it doesn't. Uh, when was the last time they lost a the game down there? I think it was it was twenty six in a row. Have they? Yeah, okay. Mm. We need to put up a fight against whoever we're playing. Um, in this case, it happens to be one of the you know, the stronger clubs in the competition. Uh, and from where we're coming from and what we've produced this year, we need we need to uh, put up a longer fight than what we've shown, no matter who we play. So whether it's Geelong with, you know, four or five out, uh, their, their depth is pretty well known. So um, I'm not saying it won't weaken their side. But uh, for our major concern is, uh, you know, more of what we've shown, more, longer. Would you say with that inconsistency, there's a big worry in the blowout, especially at Skillet, because they can produce those big bursts? Jordan? They can, Tom. So uh, yeah, I mean that's, but that'll be our, that'll be our issue to better handle that, and and hopefully not allow it to happen. So, uh, but uh, what we do know is that they're capable of playing, you know, probably ten minutes of football where they can kick six or seven goals in a row against any side. So we understand that. Uh, David McKay, would he be a massive risk to just bring him straight in? Uh, yeah, well, I've got a really, as you know, I've got a really high opinion of David, uh, and he's got to, he'll play somewhere this week because he's ready to go, having having missed twelve weeks of footy. Um, I'd probably play him SNFL at the moment, you know, unless I can someone can sway me in the next few hours before we name the squad. But he's. Uh, I'm really keen to get him back. I, you know, I hold him in very high regard, but I've got to be fair to him as well, you know, to make sure that when he does come back, he's able to play good AFL football to the level that he wants. So, uh, you know, my my heart says I'll bring him straight back in, but my head says maybe just be fair to him and give him an opportunity, you know, to test that shoulder under con competition conditions. Neil, in terms of um, experience this week, I know you've got a young squad at the moment. But yeah. Are these games almost worth uh, twice as much or more because it's, it is such a tough game? For the young players, yeah, you could, could look at it like that, Tom. I, um, I mean, every game for us now until the end of the season is is uh, there'll, there'll be always good reasons, you know, that we'll pick out of the game that will help us grow and, and push on to where we want to go. Certainly, playing Geelong, uh, highly successful side for a long period of time, haven't been beaten on their home track for twenty six games in a row. Um, you know the travel factor. Be a lot of our guys would never probably. Some of them wouldn't have even played. Certainly, uh, a lot of them haven't played against Geelong at Geelong before. Okay, so there's a brand new experience there, and um, it'd be quite a few of them probably haven't played against Geelong. 
I would think about doing the exact number. So that all adds to, that all adds to the experience of of our group and what we need to be exposed to. I think we've got a lot to lose if we don't if we don't have the right attitude for the next ten games. We have a huge amount to lose as a footy club, and that's why you know I continually say that we need to uh, to keep strong with the group, be very demanding on the group, you keep the expectations of you know being high. Otherwise, what can happen if uh, and I've seen it so often with individuals or teams that don't have uh, you know uh, any expectation is that when it gets tough it's very easy to give in because there's nothing to lose and we don't want to have that attitude we don't we don't, we don't want to have that attitude so there's we we talk about a lot to lose if we don't present in the correct manner i've got to understand at the moment that kurt tippett's playing in, in our team where i wouldn't say there's a lot of free-flowing football okay uh, the volume of four and fifty entries are reasonably low. So, and what's happening up in the midfield is not conducive. I wouldn't say uh, a lot of times to our forwards. Uh, what he does from an aerial point of view, a contesting point of view, having to handle at least two key defenders on a lot of times, is is uh, exceptional. Now, I understand everyone wants Kurt to kick, you know, ten goals and eight goals and seven goals and that sort of thing. Um, I'm sure those times will come. As, as we improve as a team, but I can't uh, I can't question what Kurt Tippett's doing at the moment with the way he's preparing. He uh, he played under a degree of adversity last week, and I thought his I thought his uh, performance was very very good. Speaking of which, he's, he's good. Even you know, with that shoulder. I mean, you know, they, he played with that shoulder. I mean, we we passed him fit, so I understand that. But you know, he missed a whole week of training, yeah. so his, his preparation uh, wasn't perfect, and yet he was able to get, take the field. And I thought played a, a very good game for us, so I disagree with that you, criticism. You have, it's been said this is the worst Crows lineup in the history of the club. You've obviously said it's the most exciting squad that I've had. Yeah. Um, so, what's more accurate? What's more disturbing? The fact that the side's not performing where they should, or the or the fact that it is the worst lineup? Uh, well, I mean, it depends what, what you judge it on. If you judge it on the scoreboard, I can understand the, the criticism and the comment that, you know, it was a, it's the what the worst worst side, worst squad. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I understand that, but you see, I'm I'm uh, because I work closely with the guys day in day out, from a team perspective, um, my excitement comes from the, the the young talent Neil that I see on a daily basis and their attitude towards football. I can't sit here and justify from a performance point of view. Uh, that excitement that I feel with this group. Clearly I can't do that because it's in black and white. So it depends on how you judge it. I mean, if, if, it's, if it's purely scoreboard judgment at the moment, I can't defend that criticism. But uh, I guess I'm looking more about where, where this squad will go uh, and how we can build it and the attitude of it um, in, in a year or two is, is probably where I'm coming from with my comments.